Welcome to Just One More Watch. This is a value focused channel. Most of the time pieces that I look at here are 500 US dollars or less. As a consequence, I have reviewed a ton of homage watches. Watches that replicate the look and the feel of a much more expensive watch, but at a fraction of the price. That fraction is generally no more than a tenth. Sometimes it can be a twentieth, a thirtieth, a fortieth, or even a fiftieth. At those prices, the old save up and buy the real thing argument just doesn't hold much water. Besides, a lot of people either don't have or just don't want to spend two, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars on a luxury watch. And that's fine, they don't have to. As such, I've reviewed a bunch of Rolex homages on the channel. I've also reviewed a surprising number of Seiko homages. I've looked at a couple of 6105s, an SLA 017, and today, it's a Marine Master 300 homage. Now this one from San Martin costs around the 300 US dollar price. Now that is approximately a tenth of the 3,000 plus US dollars that you can expect to pay if you want to pick yourself up the real deal, the genuine Seiko Marine Master. Now, this one was sent to me for review by the San Martin official store on AliExpress. I will leave a link to their store in the description of the video. During the 11.11 sale, this watch is retailing at just under 300. Normally, it is just over $300. And for that price, it does a damn good impersonation of a Marine Master. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. So this is the third San Martin that I've reviewed on the channel. I bought the SLA 017 homage earlier on this year. I then reviewed one of their Type B Fliegers with a Salita 200 in the back of it a couple of months ago. They've all come in these nice little plastic vacuum sealed flight cases containing the watch. Small instruction manual, which I have no intention of reading, and they have all come with a proper stamped and dated warranty card. Two year international warranty. Now this is a proper thick and chunky watch. It doesn't just try and ape the look of the Marine Master, it tries to ape some of the functionality as well. This is a monoblock case, ladies and gentlemen, the first of its kind that I've reviewed on the channel, and certainly the first of its kind that I've encountered on a $300 watch. So these are available in date and no date variants, and they also do one with a non fully loomed bezel insert. But why on earth would you go for the one that only had a loom pip when there is so much loom available for only about $5 more? Just under 44 millimeters in diameter. It's a thick and chunky one today, 16 mil thick, but because it's modeled on a Seiko, it doesn't have a particularly long lug tip to lug tip coming in at bang on 50. And as you can see here, drilled lugs if you do want to swap out the bracelet for a strap at any point. 20 millimeter lug width, tapering down to just under 18, back up to 21 at the clasp. And sized up for me, seven inch wrist, this one weighs in at 206 grams, so it is an absolute unit of a watch. When a watch is tipping the scales at above 200 grams, you know it means business. 316L stainless steel monoblock case, as I said, I'll show you that in more detail later on. Same with the bezel, same with the crown, and we have a solid end link, solid link bracelet. Now, again, replicating Seiko, they have used a pin and collar system here, and it is a proper milled clasp with heaps of micro adjusts. I think there's six micro adjusts in total, fold over and double security pushers on the side. Standard of finishing on the case is excellent. Make sure to brush and polish, we transition from brush to polish. There's a little brushed edge across the middle, and then back to polish for the underside for the for the rear of the watch. Nice machining on the bezel also. Unsigned crown, you can be sure that that will appear in the moans and niggles section later on though. The bezel is just what you'd want, 120 click, unidirectional rotating dive time. This is a fresh watch, it is a little bit stiff, but that I think is a good thing. Better too stiff to begin with than too loose. And as I said, that bezel insert is ceramic and it is fully loomed. Talking of loom, let's put up the loom video early today. I can't remember many watches that will outloom this Marine Master. It is insanely bright. C3 Superluminova, heaps of it packed into the bezel, packed into those applied indices and the hands. 
I reckon perhaps only the Helm Kuraburi has had such an impressive initial burst of loom. It really is incredibly noticeable when you come in from outside and it lasts and it lasts. I've often stated that if companies are gonna cut corners, the first thing to go is the loom. Conversely, if you get a watch with loom like this, that generally means it's fairly well constructed. That appears to be the case with this Marine Master. The dial is topped with a piece of double domed, very gently double domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the underside. And let's zoom in on that dial to have a look at those applied indices and the hands. Nice applied San Martin logo, very similar to the Seiko logo in that it has the, the connections all the way along the bottom. Very similar to the Seiko dial, in fact, overall. And that kind of chevron at 12, large batons at 3, 6 and 9 and circular indices everywhere else. Riho chapter ring with the minute markers, nice and clean this one, all very similar. To the Marine Master, Marine Master rather than Marine Master, professional 300 meters printed above the six. And the bracelet's nice. Like I said, it does attempt to look just like the Marine Master bracelet, five links and a pin and collar system. A little bit of flex there for comfort, but nothing too untoward and a very nicely machined security clasp with the fold overs and the heaps of micro adjust. Let's have a look at this monoblock case then. Surely one of the only monoblock watches for less than 300 US dollars. Certainly I have not encountered one. I do like that high polished shiny shark there sitting in a slight recess, circular recess. Nice and refreshing that there is no case back full of spec lists as is usually the case. So monoblock, this is all made of one piece of stainless steel that changes the way that the watch is constructed as well. What does that mean? Well, it means that it has no problem achieving 300 meters of water resistance with the aid of that screw down crown. The case itself is gonna be much, much stronger because it is made of a solid piece. There's also less chance of water incursion because there is not a case back, which is an opportunity for water to invade the watch when it's under extreme pressure. The flip side of that is that the movement, the dial, etc., has to go in from the front. So it changes the way that the watch is constructed. It also changes the equation when it comes to adjusting the movement and servicing the movement. Now the movement in this one is no surprises. It's a Seiko NH35 24 dual hacking and hand winding automatic, roughly 40 hour power reserve. Now the stated tolerances of these are minus 30 to plus 40 seconds per day. Considering that you're not gonna be able to adjust it all that easily, you hope San Martin have put a good one in the back of this. And I must say that comes as something of a relief. Plus five seconds per day, minimal beat error, healthy amplitude. You'd be right pissed off if you got one of these and it was running to within the edges of that envelope of tolerance for the NH35 down at minus 30 or plus 40 seconds a day. But overall, great choice. These things should run for maybe up to 10 years between services. And when I say services, I mean you throw it away and buy a new one. So you want a rugged, robust, reliable, and hopefully as accurate as possible movement in the back of your monoblock. This one doing the job nicely. That's it on my seven inch wrist and it is a proper beast. Look at that, 16 mil thick. As I said, only 50 mil lug tip to lug tip. So I think I can just about get away with it. Also the 20 mil lug width I think helps a lot. I don't mind a bigger watch as long as it's got 20 mil lugs. I think that helps with the look overall, helps with the fit overall. Quite well balanced in spite of that 200 plus grams. Proper overhead shot for you there. Super legible this one, just what you'd want from a dive watch. I must admit I do have a bit of a thing for green dial divers. They do this one in a plain Jane black and also a blue though. But outside in some natural light, you can see all of those green colors glinting away quite nicely. There is a sunburst effect on the dial, perhaps not as pronounced as some other watches that I've seen, but overall it does look great in the sunshine. Ceramic bezel inserts always give you a nice little bit of light play as well. Now that's it on wrist. It is a chunky and angular case, a la the original Seiko. But relatively compact lug to lug and a little bit of curvature to the case overall means that it wears quite well. Moans and niggles. Well, I guess I have got three minor niggles. The unsigned crown, I mentioned that earlier on. If I'm gonna moan at Seiko for doing it for $300, then I'm certainly gonna have a pop at a company like San Martin. Why didn't they put the shark on the crown? That would have looked sweet. The bracelet clasp, it's good, but it looks odd. That looks like it came off an old model Submariner. I'm not quite sure. I guess they thought they were doing something aesthetically similar to the Marine Master bracelet, but I don't think it looks great. 
This is the clasp from my San Martin SLA 017 homage. Why didn't they put that one on? It's got those chamfered edges, the fold over, the pushers, and just as many micro adjusts, but it looks nicer. And if this is a hardcore dive watch, why didn't they give us some form of dive extension so you could put this one over the top of a wetsuit? Again, I think that could be remedied quite easily if they change that clasp in the future. And clearly they're taking the Seiko homage thing a little too far. The chapter ring doesn't quite line up with the index at 12. And I guess my other point is that at $299, it faces some seriously stiff competition, both from the established brands and from a heap of micro brands as well. It's a bit of a niche one, therefore. It's not an homage of a Rolex Submariner. I can't remember how many of those I've reviewed for less than $299 US dollars. It's a bit of a specialist item if you like the look of a Marine Master, but don't want to stump up the three grand, but you still want something chunky, very usable, very tooly, very robust, and very dive oriented then the San Martin makes a lot of sense. But how many people are in the market for a Marine Master homage? It is quite specific. I don't expect this one to sell in massive numbers, which is a shame because that looms insane and the monoblock case, you don't see many of them at this price. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.